What's up everybody? Hope you're all doing well today. So I've been teaching AP Physics for about 25 plus years and in that time I've seen every single question that's been released and what I'm going to do today is go over what I consider the top five questions that you can expect on the test in the um, subject area of kinematics. So I'm not going to guarantee that every single one of these will be on the AP test, but I'm pretty sure 99% chance that at least one, and to be honest, probably at least three of these will be on the AP test. And if you know these, you'll definitely improve. So without further ado, let's get started. So question number five is having the ability to figure out the direction of the velocity and acceleration of a projectile and most likely they really t want you to know at the peak. So let's take a look at this. So if you kick a football at an angle, okay, some angle say theta, a few things you should understand. Okay, first of all, the horizontal velocity is going to be constant throughout. So this will not change here. This is going to be the same everywhere. All right? And that's because the acceleration in the horizontal direction is going to be zero. Now in the vertical direction, you can see that we're going to continually be slowing down, right? As we rise, it's going to get slower and slower and slower. And then at the top, the velocity in the vertical direction is going to be zero. And a lot of times they'll ask about this, like what's going on at the peak? Well, the velocity vertically is going to be zero. However, the horizontal velocity is not zero. The horizontal velocity is still going to be whatever the initial horizontal velocity was. So just remember that. The other thing is the acceleration. Now, as I just said, the acceleration horizontally is going to be zero, but the vertical acceleration, that's going to be little g, okay, or negative 9.8. And that's going to be the same everywhere especially not especially but at the peak because a lot of students will say oh the acceleration is zero at the peak no the vertical velocity is zero at the peak the acceleration is still going to be little g so the fourth most common question you'll see is something to this effect if a ball is projected horizontally the time it takes is the same regardless of the velocity. So for example, if you drop something and you kick something, the time will be the same regardless, the time to hit the ground, okay? So even if I kick this faster, the time would be the exact same regardless. So oftentimes it's just a straight question, like how does the time change? For example, they say, oh, you, velocity is like V, and then the second velocity is 2V. Which one hits the ground first? And the answer is going to be the same. So what happens if they ask you to justify your answer? Let's say this is an FRQ, and they want you to justify why it's the same. Well, if you notice, the initial velocity vertically is going to be zero in both cases. So this red ball here starts at rest, and this yellow ball, even though it has a horizontal velocity, the vertical velocity is going to be zero. The acceleration, the vertical acceleration, is the same in both cases, right? Negative 9.8. And then the height that they fall at is going to be the same. And so no matter what you do, when you solve this problem, the time will be the same because they have the same starting conditions. So if they do ask you to justify, I would essentially just say like, oh, the initial velocity is the same, the uh, acceleration is the same, and the height is the same. And so in all three cases, if those three are the same, then the time must also be the same. All right, let's look at the next one. So this is the third most common question. And this is really just a skill that you should know how to do, and that is they're going to really expect you to find um, or understand, I guess, if the slope of a position versus time graph tells us the velocity of the object. So let's look at an example of this. So one example of this might be a straight calculation. 
So if you look at the slope that we have right here, we're going from zero to 60 meters in 10 seconds, right? So that slope is gonna simply be 60 meters in 10 seconds or six meters per second. So that's essentially the velocity that you have here, six meters per second. And we could do this for all these segments. An important one to see is this one. Notice that there is no slope, so this would just be zero meters per second. Now what about this next segment? So this next segment has a negative velocity here, right? So we're going from 60 meters in um, 15, but we're going backwards. So we're going from 60 to zero in 15 seconds. So in that situation, that'd be 60 over 15, but it's backwards, so it's gonna be negative. And what that would mean is that you were going in reverse, right? And you can see that right here, we're at 10, then we're going, sorry, we're at 60 here, and then we're reversing back to zero, so we're going negative. And this one now we're back behind where we started. Another situation you might see is just comparing things. So for example, if we look at this next graph, uh, let's just compare B and D. Since B has a greater slope, that means it's going faster. So if this was four cars, for example, we'd say B is going the, uh, have a faster velocity than say uh, D, okay? Now C is obviously not moving because the position is staying the same, it has a zero slope. A, however, I do want you to notice A actually is moving the fastest of them all because its slope is the greatest. Now it has a fast slope or a high slope, but it's moving backwards. So it's moving fast, but backwards. So an example of a question they might ask you is which of these is moving, like rank these in order of fastest to slowest. So we would say A is going faster than B, which is going faster than D, which is going faster than C, right? One more thing with these questions is oftentimes they don't ask you straight, like how does the velocity change? or how does the velocity compare? They'll do something a little more subtle, like how does the momentum compare? Well, momentum is mass times velocity, so you ultimately are finding the velocity, but they're at really asking about momentum, right? Or maybe the kinetic energy, how does the kinetic energy compare? Well, you do the same thing, you really first find the velocity, and then you would know the kinetic. Okay, so just be on the lookout for that. All right, let's move on to the second most common question which is a velocity time graph. So another graph here, this time velocity time, this time the slope is gonna be the acceleration. So let's look at an example of this. So similarly to the last one, you could they might just ask you for a straight calculation. So for example, um, if we're gonna look for like from zero to three, what's the acceleration? Well, you would just find the slope, right? So we're going from zero to 15 meters per second, and that's taking three seconds. So that's gonna have a slope of five meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, which tells us the acceleration. Now this region here, be careful, because in the last problem, position versus time, we said that was stopped. That is not stopped. This is moving at a constant velocity. In fact, if you see a question like this, one of the answers will usually be that you're stopped. The answer is no. I mean, notice right here, you're moving at 15 meters per second during that time period. So we're just moving at a constant velocity there. So what about this region? Well, this region, notice this is a negative acceleration, right? Specifically, this would be 15 negative 15 over one second or negative 15 meters per second squared. But what's happening here? So notice we're going from 15 meters per second to zero meters per second. So we're actually slowing down in this region. In this region, we're gonna be slowing down, okay? So that's not too bad, but this is what gets people all the time. So notice here, we also have a negative slope. This would be negative 10 meters per second squared. And a lot of students will say, oh, that's slowing down. But no, check this out. We're going from zero here to negative 10. 
So zero is the slowest possibility, right? That's, we're stopped right there. We're actually speeding up, but we're speeding up backwards. So be careful when you see that one. They'll definitely try to trick you with that guy. So just like the last problem, sometimes they don't even ask about acceleration. Maybe they ask about force, for example. Well, remember, force is mass times acceleration. So if they say, which one is the force the greatest, you have to just figure out which one has the greatest acceleration. So what's the answer? Which one does have the greatest acceleration? Well, that would be this segment right here. Okay, Even though it's negative, it has the steepest slope. We're just slowing down at the quickest rate, right? That one's 15, this one was five, this one was 10. So the one that is the greatest would be segment, or let's call that A, B, C, D. That would be segment C, is the greatest acceleration. All right, let's look at the last, the most common situation you should definitely know how to do. And we're going to stick with our velocity time graphs. This time, though, we're going to find the area under the graph. And this question I see very often. Almost every test has a question like this, or they ask you to find this. So let's do an example of this. So we use the exact same graph that we had before. Maybe they say, oh, how far have you gone after three seconds? And you're just going to find the area of this region here. So if they say, you know, how far have you gone? What's our displacement? Just find the area of that. So in this case, this is a triangle here. This would be 1 half, 3 times 15. Okay, so that's what, 45 over 2, 22.5 meters. That's all you do. Now one region here, let's look at this last segment here. Notice that it, it does have a negative, um, negative area here. So for example, this would be 1 half. Uh, 1 times 10, or negative 10, which means this would have an area of negative 5. So what's happening here is you're actually you're going backwards, right, as we talked about in the last section. So that's what negative area means. It just means you're going backwards. Now, a very common question you'll see is maybe they ask you to compare two things. And so maybe, for example, we have some car, let's just have a car moving at a constant velocity like this. And then they ask you, like, when do the two meet up? When are they at the same point or the same displacement, the same location? Well, you just find the two areas, figure out the areas of both, figure out when the two areas are the same, and there you go. They would be at the same location. Okay, so when is this area equal to this area? Well, it looks like, based on this, just roughly speaking, it'd be approximately right here. Okay, three seconds in this example. All right, hope that was helpful. Um, please let me know in the comments. Actually, why don't, once you take the AP test, why don't you let me know if any of these show up? Just write me a quick comment. If none of them show up, you know what? Just dislike this video because... I will have to rethink if that happens. All right, good luck everybody.